You're expecting us to cover Doctor Who? Major's got us covered. Guys, I haven't been this confused since college. Doctor Who season 14 has just come out. Well, you texted me. I swear it just sounded like straight satire. Do you, all right. So while I'm going to read off my Is little it? bit, Robbie, do you want to pull up the text message I sent you? Doctor Who season 14 uh, has received a perfect score on Rotten Tomato. Now, it initially got a, a flat 100. Perfect score? But from the from the critics, I'm guessing. From the critics. Of course, it's just from the yeah. critics. And then it dropped down to 96% overall from the critics but still 100% for the top critics. Audience score was a 35%. Much more realistic. <laughs> We've talked about this before. Forrest doesn't like Ron Tomatoes. He thinks IMDb is a much better metric. That's coming in at 5.9 out of 10. So let's go ahead and call that, that 59%. Right. I found your text that you sent Dude. me. Is, you you want to read it? it looks like, so the doctor is a gay black man. His sidekick is a white lesbian married to a black woman. Don't worry, they adopt first episode, and the main bad guy is a transgender woman. Bro, is this a trap? I didn't even oh, talk yeah. about this without getting canceled. I need to make a slight <laughs> correction. His sidekick isn't a lesbian. She was adopted by a strong black woman, and at the beginning of this episode, she's also adopting a black kid uh, named like Lulu Bell. Bell. I don't know if you guys heard about this. Metro UK, a popular news publication across the pond they put out an article saying sorry white men but doctor who was never meant for you I saw that awkward <laughs> like dude like that was doctor who's the longest running tv show of all time it was funded by the so, bbc so, so, whoa 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 so a show started in britain by the bbc is not for white people. not for, not for white people uh, uh, cool. cool 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 according to this article they had to shut down their twitter account for like 48 hours. Like they just had to like lay low. They were like, uh oh, we, well, we I got heard they like completely off. removed their Twitter account or did they just. No, no, no. They, they, they removed it. Like... They just got back on yesterday. Right? They oh, were just they like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. They were like, thank <laughs> God for this 24 hour news cycle. Now, was that guy's zealots over here to remind you all about it, Metro UK? Crazy. Like the doctor always says, it's female. But here's what I want to say. Not every publication is the same. Over here in the States, Screen Rant put out an article called Doctor Who Season 14's opening scene is hard to watch if you're already a fan. And yeah, I got to say, um, it was it was five minutes. And we've all seen that scene, that meme, right? Where the doctor is dancing around in a nightclub and in a skirt. From falling down. And that, that music is playing. He's in the discotheco. The discotheco, I believe they call it. Five yeah. minutes and five seconds in. They they just could not wait. You can't ignore my chocolateness. So we're not going to ignore that. <laughs> Even like a, one episode. They just like, at the very beginning, they was like, hey guys, this is what we're going to be doing this season. And we are going to be doing it very, very hard. But here's my thing as a fan. I'm not a fan, sorry. I, this is the first episode I've ever <laughs> seen of Doctor Who, right? I want to ask no. you guys <laughs> as fans. Well, I was actually inspired. We had a, a previous YouTube short that did pretty well where I was talking and I asked Matt if he wanted to see a Doctor Who episode where the Doctor defeated the bad guy by twerking. And, and we actually had one of our subscribers comment and say, that actually sounds really interesting. That might be the first episode I watch. And I was like, you know what? For the fans, let me give this content a, a little taste. Like I was saying before when Robbie uh, read out that tweet, 100% from the top critics, 35% from the audience, and 59% from INDB. Depending on where you are, who you are in life, and, and walking in to this first episode, I 100% agree with all three of those scores. If you need representation like it's going out of style, this is it for you. If you are a 65-year-old wanker who yells at Chelsea fans when they cross the street and haven't missed a single episode of Doctor Who, you probably had a heart attack and died. Uh, I apologize for your, to your family. Yeah, you will be missed. You probably weren't being a subscriber, according to our metrics. But well, I like to think you one day so could have been. I don't know a, I don't know a whole uh, lot about Doctor Who, but... 
where I learned more of like the background of the character with the with the doctor was from Death Battle on YouTube. <laughs> it was yeah. between Doctor Who and Rick. I have to check yeah, it well, out. Um, we'll have have see I've never seen Death Battle. Well, oh, you what? No, not is, at all. Is that None like is, death battles on YouTube? Is that like rap battles of history? It's epic rap battle. Epic rap battle is what he means. Oh no! no yeah, I'm, it's no. I'm not yeah. talking about epic rap battle. Okay, because okay. everyone knows we all grew oh. up. We all grew up on the epic yeah, rap battle. That. But there was yeah, an epic rap battle. They have all kinds of characters who... from. They have all kinds of characters from different shows. Death and battle. They would, huh? they'll, they'll break down all the details of all their skills and stuff that have. They've shown through the show. Noise. Let's go. And they'll, All right. And they'll, and, and they'll at the end of after describing each character, they'll even animate a battle scene between the two characters. This is what I'll do. I'll search Nicole. Death Battle, Batman versus Superman, and based on their answers, how I'll rate the entire channel. We're gonna have to do the Manchester oh, they, United fan they have, the to get that to get those sixty-five-year-old Manchester fans. I went to the their most popular ones. Yeah, see that Manchester their flag. Most pop, their most popular one is Superman yeah, no, do, do versus the Goku. Yeah. What's next? Um, so really quick, really quick, um, just to kind of finish the thought process here. As an actual Doctor Who fan, um, I am all for representation. I am Absolutely. the idea that he can change. You know, like it's not even a he. It's you know he is the Doctor. It's a male um, presenting Time Lord. No, no. Yes. We know everything, thanks. And you know nothing. It's a shame you're not a woman anymore. Because she'd have got to see. We've got all that power, but there is a way to get rid of it. Something a male presenting Time Lord will never understand. So, I don't mind representing, you know, different ideas, beliefs, cultures, whatever. But then there's like representation for representations, you know, purpose and i call it like kind of the checklist where you have to like hit every single box it's 100 you know just to say that you're representing like, as many don't, as they can that. so they could brag about well, it oh how about this where's where's that's your just, representation at you love yeah. doctor who when robbie was listing off those characters did i ever talk about a white guy where is your representation but, you know, where is england's exactly. representation no, i'm not even concerned about that but you know i feel it's I, not to be jaded but i feel like when you do something in this manner you're not actually you're not they actually don't actually care people to understand because people just immediately shut out and you look at the score from critics to you know regular people who are watching this you're just trying to throw something out there and be like enjoy it without enjoying it it's sad quite frankly there's better ways to do it for instance i loved idris Silva as heimdall yeah and i remember people freaked the the hell oh. out about that it's like, no, this is perfect person to cast for this character. Mm -hmm. Love it. There's a show my kids watch, which I suggest any parent to watch. Craig of the Creek. Another, a lot of representation from different beliefs, cultures, ideas, but it's done in a right way. It's not done in this kind of like checklist fashion. Like kind of this, like, if you're not on board with our checklist, then you're, you're part of the problem. And it's like, I don't Ooh, want to be that's the Disney dictated approach. to. I want to be entertained. It's the Eric Cartman in that episode where he talks about what, what's her name. You know, we need to have another character and they need uh, to be this and that. Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. but, Throw a chicken at Make her lame. Point, second point. I asked the people who are watching this, have you ever watched a movie or a show, really enjoyed it, and then logged on to Rotten Tomatoes or IMDb yeah. and oh, seen it was like a piece score. of shit? Like, Wait. Do I, no. do I hate it now, too? Like, does I, I mean, those oh. you? No one would ever admit to that. that I understand it's what you're literal, asking, but yeah. here's my question. Cause I'll say this, though. I understand exactly what you're asking. It's a great question. Something the fans... Well, we're all anonymous online. Go ahead and comment down below if you've got the balls, but go ahead and just ask yourself uh, that question because it's an excellent question when Matt asked. Because there have been times where I had opinions on a television show, and then I go to listen to, like, my favorite podcast or talk about it uh and then i walk away from the podcast with a different opinion now do you, did my opinion change because they brought up great points i didn't think about or did my opinion change because i'm fanboying over a person i've never met before who has millions of subscribers and and has one opinion on a movie that's different than mine i so, think like, that's uh, hard to answer 
for the, I mean, I know the answer for myself. I think it's hard to answer for like a general individual, but I think if you keep asking yourself that question over and over and over again, you yourself can determine a pattern and then that'll help you appreciate your media bias. Is that what you're saying, um, Matt? Yeah, because there's 100% times where I've watched a movie, really, really either loathed it or loved it, and then gone online and then read the reviews. And part of it is maybe I just didn't get it. Um, and then I read the reviews. I'm like, okay, I see where they're going with this, or I see where they did this incorrectly. But at the end of the day, like, with my initial opinion, I enjoy this movie. Why do I let other people influence whether or not I enjoy yeah. it? Ah. Matt, That's I it. love you. I think you're not digging hard enough. You need to find the opinions online that match yours. And then those are the comments that you read. And those are the reviews that you respect. And all those other guys online don't appreciate Zack Snyder the way you and I do. I understand completely, Matt. 